Hello friends, welcome back to Archaeology 101. In today's topic, I will be discussing Miocene apes, the ancestors of our ancestors. So let's start with what the Miocene actually is. This is an expanse of time which takes place between 23.03 to 5.33 million years ago. The Miocene is generally a warmer climate globally in parts, and in some areas it can be as eight degrees warmer than it is today. There are, however, periods of glaciation in the later Miocene, and environmental conditions just seem to deteriorate globally. Europe, for example, became much drier and cooler during the middle and late Miocene around 14 million years ago, and that started the shrinkage of previously dense forests, for example. In Eastern Africa, there was the opposite, there was desertification and even the almost total desiccation of the Mediterranean Sea as well. So there were some particularly cataclysmic events that happened during this expanse of time, which would have an impact upon the types of animals and the types of apes that we end up seeing during this period. So we know roughly what the Miocene looked like, what it was, when it was. So why is it important to paleoanthropologists, archaeologists and human evolution in general? So ancestors of humans split from chimps around eight to six million years ago. And in the previous slide, I mentioned that was around the late Miocene era. The Miocene in general was home to many different species of apes. The fossil record is saturated with them all through Africa, Europe and Asia. They probably originated in Africa and they radiated into Eurasia about 17 million years ago. One of these species may have been an ancient ancestor of ours, or it at least gives us a clue of what they look like or what sort of traits appeared at what time. They may have the origins of certain behaviours, such as bipedalism, which is seen as a fundamental development in our evolution behaviour later. When I initially set out on this research project, I was only aware of a few Miocene ape species, but my research found that there were so many different types of ape, also all over the world and overlapping at the same time. Just take a look at this list briefly and just get to grips with how many different apes there were in the Miocene era and think what are the problems that come with having so many different contenders for an ancient ancestor? So there are all of these different ape species outside of Africa. This has led some to speculate, did hominins evolve from an ancestor in Europe or Asia? This seems unlikely as all the known fossils of hominins in Africa predate those that are found in Europe. It is possible that a very early ape ancestor migrated from Europe or Asia into Africa, where it could go on to evolve into a hominin, but the African origins is the favoured theory. A side note, the little figure at the side there, that came from a anti-evolution Bible bashing website, but it had one of the best diagrams I could find. Bit ironic, but thanks. There are three most well-known species of ape from the late Miocene period, which I'm going to discuss. The first one is Salanthropus chadensis. This was originally discovered in 2001 in Chad, where the discovery of six fossils were made, including craniums, one which you can see to the right. Now there are six to nine individuals known. The original six were associated with animal remains, which were dated to around six to seven million years ago. There are conflicting conclusions over what the stance and locomotion the fossils have because there are very limited postcranial remains. So we've got skulls, but we don't have anything really below the skull. A partial femur, which was discovered in Chad in 2001, was, I can only describe as lost, and it wasn't written up until 2020. But there were some suggestions by certain academics that there was shenanigans going on here and the feeling was that this femur had been lost intentionally to hide certain characteristics about the locomotion of Salanthropus. What was actually true I'm not sure 
but things in archaeology do sometimes just not get published for years and years but it's okay now because we now have the femur and it's been well written about so the environment of the Salanthropus may have been forested with grassland. So the researchers in 2022 suggested from a wider array of fossils than what had previously been said was that Salanthropus was polyvalent, meaning it could probably walk both on the ground, but was also arboreal, so it could climb trees. And they suggested that it was probably quite a capable climber. It's unclear whether there is any relation to later hominins, but there are certain physical features about Santhropus's bones that do match later hominins. Our second ape is Aurorin tugensis, also known as Millennium Man. It was discovered in Kenya in amongst rocks which were dated between 6.2 and 5.7 million years old originally discovered as possibly five individuals from 13 fossils. Like Salanthropus, the bipedalism question has received much mixed opinion. Originally in 2018, it was thought by Kupavage and et al that this was a bipedal ape, but this has been contested only last year by Kazvan and et al who thought their methods to identify bipedalism were a bit iffy and I, that's a really good paper and I would advise reading that. It had rounded molars and small canines, so the diet is thought to have been fruit, leaves and roots. But let me also leave you with a warning here about Liam's paradox. Liam's paradox states that just because they have teeth which are capable of eating fruit, leaves and roots, doesn't mean that they're only eating fruit, leaves and roots. The bones have similarities to older and contemporary apes and also to later australopiths which is quite exciting because that could be a possible contender for an ancestor our third and final ape species is artipithecus cadaver most of the fossils have been found in the middle awash area of ethiopia and these have been dated to around 5.8 to 5.2 million years ago there have been some single finds as well from nearby areas such as a toe bone and a tooth which was dated to 6.3 million years old. Quite possibly this is an early form or a direct ancestor of the later Ardipithecus ramidus which we have a much better fossil sample of and it was suggested that this was a bipedal hominin. However the remains of cadaver are really fragmentary so they're very difficult to reconstruct and they may represent multiple different species because we can't confirm whether they are the same because they're just so scattered. So it is currently unknown as to whether they should include Ardipithecus cadaver as an early hominin or not. Foot phalanx morphology tentatively suggests that this is bipedal but that would have to prove that the phalanx came from a specific one species. We know it existed within an environment of woods and grassland, and this is very similar to Salanthropus. In fact, cadaver has been suggested to have very similar teeth as Salanthropus, so maybe it was existing in the same way as living both within the trees and being able to walk along the grassland as well. It possibly ate hard fibrous foods because it had narrow front teeth and large back ones for chewing. So we've spoken about the three case studies and we've already demonstrated that there were loads of different apes all around the world. But eventually all of these species went extinct. So what happened here? This may have happened around the late Miocene where global cooling started to begin and this put pressure on the habitats and the apes themselves. This global cooling may have started around 8.8 .8 million years ago, although there were various cooling and warming events throughout the period, but this really seems to have been the, the killing blow for the apes mostly in Europe and in Asia. Subtropical trees, for example, in West and Central Asia were replaced by deciduous trees, and this may have had a knock-on effect to the apes who could not cope in such an environment. There have been suggestions by other studies as well that predators such as Machaerodus, which is a large cat, may have helped to finish off the apes as well. But there are also other animals which may have caused environments to change, such as large rhinoceroses. Populations of apes may have been able to survive, however, in certain refugia such as China, Lufongensis, for example, 
for a few millennia. Here, maybe conditions were a little bit warmer for a time, but eventually these small populations would also collapse. Let's wrap up what we've learned here. So there are a wide variety of apes in the Miocene all over the world, in the Mediterranean, Europe, Africa, and Asia. These apes either then went on to become extinct, or perhaps they did go on to evolve, but we're not entirely sure. But the pressures on later Miocene apes would have probably been due to changing environment and maybe predators as well, and maybe even the movement of species which accelerated changing environments, such as those rhinoceros species we discussed in Europe. Three species in particular have captured the anthropological and archaeological community's attention, that being Salanthropus chidensis, Aurorin tugensis, and Ardipithecus cadaver. All three of them are highly contested over where they sit in the evolutionary tree, whether they're hominins or not, whether they're habitually bipedal or bipedal at all, and what their relationship, if any, to later hominins is. This is all unknown. Even some very basic facts such as what did they eat are not especially well known. A lot of big claims are being made. Not so much now, there is a bit more caution at hand, but there are big claims being made from unsecure contexts that that these are fossils which are very spread out, particularly Ardipithecus cadaver, where fossils are very spread out across Africa and very fragmented, so we can't guarantee that they're all from the same species, about what the bipedal nature was, what they look like. These are questions later down the line when we have more corresponding evidence where we find fossils from a secure context. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed that video. It's great to be back and I can't wait to see what 2023 brings and I'll be making more videos in the future. But for now, I'll see you next time on Archaeology 101.